everyone. My name is Sarah. I'm the director here at the Atlanta School of Photography, and I wanted to take this time to show you around Zoom, our new online learning platform. We've got some new workshops and classes rolling out online, and want to make sure that everyone uh, that participates knows Zoom and the software and is comfortable with using it before the workshop. So uh, go ahead. If you'd like to open up Zoom and follow me along on this, you're more than welcome to. I'm currently in a meeting uh, that I've started uh, with the other computer over there. Uh, so it might look a little bit different from uh, what you're looking at, um, but otherwise feel free to just hang out and see how I'm using Zoom and everything that you're gonna need to know before uh, your next class or workshop with us online. So your screen might be looking a little bit different than this, just depending on what pops up when you first log in. Uh, you might not be seeing yourself in the right-hand side like I am, hi. Uh, that's depending on if you're sharing your video with us or not. Uh, that's totally entirely up to you as to whether or not you wanna share your webcam with the instructor and the rest of the students. Um, but to be able to enable that is gonna be down here in the bottom left-hand corner. So right now I've got stop video on because I'm sharing my video, but if you wanna share yours, you can uh, say to start video. That's also prompted upon entry into the meeting. So as soon as you log in, it should ask you if you'd like to uh, allow for video and you can say no, you can say yes, but you can set that up through here and check out some of the uh, video settings and just to, hi, just to make sure that you're set up correctly. So the camera that you wanna use generally is just gonna be the one that's inside of your computer. Uh, but if you have a webcam, make sure that it's uh, set to that one. And um, you can even enable HD, mirror my video and touch up my appearance. You can even look really pretty on camera. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so you can also have a couple different options on here um, as to hide non-video participants. This will just be able to see um, the person that, the people or person that has their video on and connected and spotlight my video when speaking. That can be kind of nice for certain views so we know who is talking. Um, and you can say always display participant name, a couple different options through here for the video. So take a look through those, make sure that's set up properly and all of it's working correctly. Uh, the other one over here is going to be the audio. So on uh, arrival for all of our online workshops, all of our students will be muted. Uh, we found this to work really well because we tried it the other way and unfortunately it was a complete and total chaos um, with some folks depending on uh, where they were at the time. Uh, you could hear everything from cleaning dishes in the background to kids running around to TVs, uh, radios, like a whole mess of stuff. And it just became a very distracting learning environment. So what we're doing is now we are, oh no, my mouse battery is very low, fun. Um, so uh, what we're doing from uh, here on out is muting all of our participants upon entry allowing the instructor to have some time to be able to get through pieces of the material and then at certain points opening up the uh, audio for discussion and questions. Um, and we're gonna be able to do that manually on our end. So there's no worry about uh, having to do too much uh, in terms of allowing your audio. The one thing that we really wanna make sure that if you do wanna ask questions, uh, through the audio, which we definitely, definitely, definitely want to hear them. We love questions at ASAP. Please, please, please ask questions. So to make sure that that's set up properly is if you go down here and you can say the audio settings and make sure that everything is hooked up correctly and that not only the speaker is working because you want to be able to hear us, that's important, um, but we want to be able to hear you. So make sure that the microphones are working properly in your computer or if you've got like a headset or something, that's fine. Uh, we do recommend headphones. Headphones are great and have the best quality for hearing. Um, but just keep in mind that if you can't hear um, or if we can't hear you, it might be thinking that the headphones have a microphone attached to them. So if they don't, um, then make sure that the microphone is set to like the built-in microphone inside of your computer and uh, put those through a test run Make sure they sound good and that we can hear you and the volume's all set. Cool, sounds good. So we've got that one down. Um, so how the process is going to work uh, with uh, the workshops and the classes when it comes to 
uh, asking and answering questions. The first thing that we want to be able to do is open up a couple windows. The first one is going to be participants. So if you click on that, you can actually see the participants in the class or the workshop over here on the side. Um, if you want to change your name, you can even do that here and say rename to a different name if you want to do that. Um, but the big thing that we want to show you is this thing down here in the bottom right hand corner, which is raise hand. So while we give those opportunities to be able to ask questions or maybe even in between, if you have a really important question that has to be answered or else you're going to forget it, uh, you can choose to raise your hand and then a little thingy comes up on your screen and our instructors can see that. And so we'll know that you've raised your hand to be able to ask a question. Um, if your question was answered or um, maybe you didn't want to ask anymore, maybe it was, it was answered by another person because they asked it first, you can always click on the hand to say lower hand. But of course, don't be scared. We love, again, we love, love, love questions. Please do not hesitate to ask any questions. We want this experience with ASOP to be as seamless as possible. So you get the same experience that you've had in the classroom that you have online. So we're really excited to be able to do that through the online software in the interim and maybe even in the future. So yeah. Um, the other thing that is available is the chat. So if you click on the chat, you get that to show up here and you can start to type your message in down at the bottom. That can go out to everyone so everyone can see the question or you can ask it directly to the instructor and have that be a private message. So that's up to you. Um, we encourage uh, asking the question to everyone so everyone has a reference and can see what the question is. And then also that other people can see if they have the same question and would like to also ask that question. So uh, yeah, that will be a really good option to open it up so everyone can see the question that you're asking. Same in the classroom as if you were to raise your hand and ask it out loud. Uh, other things that you can do, you can load files in through Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, Box, or just directly from your computer. So if there's homework assignments or uh, if there's a critique workshop, you can share images that way. However, with our critique workshops, what we're going to do is send out a Dropbox link ahead of time. So you can load your images in before the workshop begins. That way, as soon as the workshop starts, you can uh, have the critique running from the very beginning and not worrying about too much on the technical end of uploading files and all that craziness. Um, but worst case scenario, you can do that here or you can email them directly to us at staff at atlschoolofphoto.com. Um, couple other options, you can also say to save the chat when it's over and done with. Um, that way you have some options here. But the other thing that we're gonna be doing um, for uh, a good majority of our workshops is what we're hoping to be able to do is to record them. We do have a recording option to uh, record all of the uh, online sessions and the meetings through Zoom. So we'll be able to have an online link that's put up in the cloud and you can access that when we send out the link. So you can sort of revisit the similar things that we've been doing in class if you need a little bit of a refresher that you'll have that available to you. Some other things that you can do or have like little reactions. So I know sometimes in my classes, uh, I like to be able to say, is everyone good? And then you can just give a little thumbs up and it's like, yeah, cool. <laughs> So in the majority of our workshops, what we're going to have is a PowerPoint presentation. You'll be able to see the instructor through a webcam, like you are now, hi, and you'll have a PowerPoint presentation here next to you. Uh, you can choose which view you'd like to be able to see this in, and we've got a couple different view options up here. You can say fit to window, which is the one that we recommend, that way it's just sized for wherever you're seeing it. We also have side by side mode, or if you just want to put everyone kind of up here instead and see the PowerPoint presentation a little bit larger and you don't need to necessarily see the instructor, you can do that as well. Otherwise, the side-by-side -side mode gives you a little bit of a bigger option to be able to see the instructor um, rather than uh, having uh, just the PowerPoint presentation and hearing them and then seeing them on a small screen. Um, totally up to you, however you want to format that. With some of our uh, Lightroom, Photoshop, and other software workshops that we're going to have coming up or possibly have going on right now uh, is the ability to screen share. So this is especially helpful for our private lessons, our one-on-one -on -one tutoring, where we can actually see your screen and then even be able to uh, get in and actually click things on your screen remotely. So if you have particular questions about 
things that you're clicking on or where things are, uh, you're gonna have the option to be able to share your screen at certain points during a workshop or throughout an entire private tutoring session. So the first thing that the instructor has to do is to end the sharing on their screen. So I'm gonna go over to the other computer on uh, the desk and turn off screen sharing and I'll be right back. All right, so now that the instructor has uh, ended their screen sharing, you can be allowed to screen share at this point. This might be prompted by the instructor themselves, or you can simply go down here to share screen. And we get a couple different options immediately straight out of the gate. Uh, we recommend sharing your entire desktop. This is because uh, if you need to access things other than like Lightroom or Photoshop, such as your Finder or File Explorer, we'll be able to see those as well. If you say just share Adobe Lightroom and then you go into your Finder or File Explorer, we won't be able to see that. So we definitely recommend just saying share your desktop across the board. And what will happen is uh, your video will disappear. You'll go away. Bye bye. And you'll be able to actually see your screen um in uh with a, this green bounding box surrounding it and wherever the green bounding box is means that's everything that you're currently sharing uh so if you want to be able to stop share or pause it you can go from here and say it would be paused or just stop share entirely if you're done you can hand over uh the control to uh the instructor so you can say give mouse or keyboard control two and say Atlanta School of Photography. And then they're able to remotely control your screen and you can see them moving around in it. So yeah, pretty cool. So, and then once you're done or they'll be able to turn this off as well as a board control. That sounds so serious, um, but it's not. It's just ending them from to be able to remotely control your screen. And uh, you can go stop share and we're back to normal. Hi. <laughs> so pretty simple. It, it is pretty simple and straightforward uh, for the screen sharing. Um, also, if you are in like a regular lecture based workshop and you have your camera and you want to be able to point out certain things or buttons and you're not exactly sure where the settings are and you want to hold it up so the instructor can see it, we recommend um, having that video of the webcam turned on, whether it's inside your computer or uh, with this external webcam and making sure that all of that is set correctly. So again, in that video portion, just being able to set that, whether you wanna stop the video and I can go bye. And then once you're ready to say, here's where my settings are, can you show me where? You can say, start video. So yeah, that's about it. Pretty easy. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'm glad that y'all are on board for trying these out. This is a new venture for us as well. Uh, world's a little bit crazy right now, but we still want to be able to make sure that all of our students are uh, able to join in in the workshops and classes that we're going to be doing uh, in all different platforms and levels. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, hope to see you in our next workshop. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send us an email or give us a call at the school. Our doors are always open and uh, see you in class. Bye.